Welcome back to another JPT tutorial. Now we're in mozzarella today, and we have the boilerplate code just to make sure everything's working. I'm just going to go up here and run. Working perfectly fine. So, delete. Now, this is where we're going to be writing our code today. And we're going to be learning about something called an if statement, and also a query. Now, we're going to start out with queries because they're a bit simpler than if statements and they're a lot easier to write. So a query basically starts off with a question mark. Then it's going to take in a condition. Now there's three main conditions. There's equals, less than, greater than. I think those are reverse order, but uh, it's fine. Equals, greater than, or less than. So in the, if we wrote something like three, less than four. This is going to simplify the Boolean value of true. Booleans are just true or false. And it's just, it, there. it's exactly what it is. Now, we're going to start off writing our first query. We're going to say var x is equal to five. And so our first query is going to start with a question mark. And we're going to say, is x less than 4. Then we're going to want to put a colon. And after the colon, we're going to put what we want to happen if this is true. If so, I want it to print x is less than 4. Easy peasy. Now, if that's save, let's run. Nothing happened because x is not less than 4. So let's add another condition using the dollar sign. After the dollar sign, we just basically repeat this format. Let's do x is equal to 4. And this is just short. So it's, it is equals equals. Mozzarella just shortens it for us, so it's easier on the eyes. So x is equal to 4. We're going to print line x is 4. So let's save and run. Still nothing, because x is not less than 4 or equal to 4. So now let's add, add a default case. And this is just dollar sign underscore. And then we're just going to instantly put a colon. And then print line x is neither equal to nor less than 4. Now this is getting kind of messy. But since it's all semicolon based, we can just add a new line for all of these, and it'll be perfectly fine. Let's save and run, and voila, it worked perfectly. So queries are just one line if statements, basically. They work very similarly, but they're just only one condition. So it's they're great for small things, and they also return whatever value you're doing. So if you want to, you can do var y is equal to, let's say, x is less than 4. We can make it, we can just copy paste this, except instead of printing it, we just want it to return the string. And so in this case, whatever this returns, is going to be set to y. And then if we print y, it's going to have the same effect as this. Ta -da. So let's get into if statements. If statements start with if. Now, after that, we're going to have to put parentheses. And inside of these parentheses is our condition. Just like a query, except the condition is inside parentheses. So we're going to do x is less than 4. And so after this, we put curly brackets. These curly brackets declare the body of our if statement. And currently, there's an error because we don't have any code inside the curly brackets. So it just wants us to delete the if statement. But we'll add some code in a second. But anything inside the curly brackets will be executed if this is true. So we can just do print line x 
is less than 4. But that's obviously not true, so we want to add another condition. And we only want this condition to execute if this is not true. So we can use the elif keyword, do elif x is equal to 4. Curly brackets once again. Then x is 4. So, same thing, except with elif, it's just short for else if. It's much faster to type. We have our condition, then we have our curly brackets. What if we want to add a default so it runs if none of those are true? Well, that's when we're going to use the else keyword. I'm going to add else, and just print line, x is neither less than nor equal to 4. So let's run this. And the advantage of if statements over queries is for if statements, we can have multiple statements. statements. So in here we can put like huzzah and it executes everything in here. Whereas with queries, it can only execute one thing. Now queries are shorter and they return their value. So really it's just dependent on whatever you are feeling like. Now a query might remind you of a ternary if you've worked with other programming languages. And essentially, yes, queries are ternaries, but just on steroids. So instead of having one condition and then the default condition, it has as many conditions as you want. But if you are familiar with ternaries, and you want to use it like that, it'd be it just like something like this. Or x true. Uh, like one, two, like that. But if you're new to programming, you have absolutely no idea what I'm saying or what I just did. So let's review. If statements take in a condition in parentheses and then a body defined using curly brackets. If the condition is true, it runs everything in the body. Otherwise, it checks for an elif or an else statement. If it's an elif, it checks if the elif condition is true and then repeats the same thing for the if statement. And if it's an else statement, it just executes everything inside the body if if was false. And we have queries, which take in a condition, follow it by a colon, and then a statement, and it'll just execute whatever the statement is. Then you can use dollar signs to add more statements and more conditions. And finally, you can use dollar sign underscore to add a default statement. They also return their value, but they can only execute one statement at a time. So these are very, very important for control flow. Otherwise, the program is just going to execute the exact same thing every single time. However, if we add some user input, some randomness in this control, then it's gonna, we're going to get some variation. We're going to have interaction. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial where we tackle some new subjects.